Thank you for tuning in. This is Alex Tardy, National Weather Service Meteorologist. We're going to talk about the upcoming heat wave. Really hot conditions for inland areas. It looks like it'll continue into mid-June. Check out weather.gov for the latest information. Here are the key points. Excessive heat warning for the deserts, over 110. Heat advisory for Inland Empire, between 95 and 105. We've had some prior heat waves this year, uh, but not as intense as this one or as long duration. The peak of the heat is Friday, Saturday, but um, it does look like the heat will increase again next week in the deserts. So we are talking 10 to 15 degrees above average, even for our desert areas and also the inland valleys. Very warm overnight low temperatures in the deserts. Do note the winds will increase in the mountain passes and deserts, especially Sunday afternoon and evening. That's as the weather system goes by to the north. And as mentioned, the heat will rebuild back in the deserts, it looks like next week, Tuesday through Thursday. What's a warning? Uh, well, this image here shows you exactly what a warning is. It's temperatures that could affect everyone. Um, so if preparations aren't taken, whether it's outdoor activities of pleasure, work, recreation, um, heat stroke, heat exhaustion can occur. So these are significant temperatures and these are temperatures that are dangerous to everyone if you don't take precautions. What is a heat advisory? That's a lower level, but still it's hot. It's something that's nuisance to most of us because we go in and get air conditioning for others, elderly, those with health issues or higher risk, pets. Heat can still cause heat exhaustion and heat stress, especially in outdoors and during the peak heat of the day. So some precautions are still needed, especially for the vulnerable groups. Heat risk. We often talk about heat risk and that is basically the high temperature forecast compared to normal highs. So it's not normal to have high temperatures of 115 in the lower deserts. Even though they are a desert and it's approaching summer, this time of year, it is still 10 to 15 degrees above average. And that places those areas in the high red shaded heat risk. What's causing this heat wave? It looks to us like it's a combination of an Eastern Pacific upper level high pressure that has really dominated the past two years, driving storms to our north, and also development of the seasonal Four Corners upper level high pressure system in the desert southwest. So the two merging together Friday, Saturday. Meanwhile, a strong storm goes by to the north. And speaking of a strong storm, it is a significant atmospheric river to impact Washington and the far Pacific Northwest. So red shaded is strong transport by the wind of tropical moisture into the Pacific Northwest, a lot like we see during the cooler rainy season. Most of this falls apart as it sags this weekend across Northern California. So don't expect any rain for most of California, certainly none in Southern California. Here's the outlook of precipitation. Note a couple things, uh, moisture increasing over New Mexico and into the plains. And also note with the storm track and the atmospheric river to the north, the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies getting, in some areas, a couple inches of rain up by Seattle. Cooler weather will take over California on Sunday. That also increases our wind here in SoCal. Jet stream will flatten out early next week, Tuesday, and that will start to allow the atmosphere to warm back up for upper level high pressure to press back north. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, it becomes more of a classic summertime pattern, upper level high pressure over the desert southwest. Still another system, not as strong, pressing across the Pacific Northwest along that white line or jet stream. And then we see the potential for some southerly flow, perhaps monsoon flow, uh, as upper level high pressure sits up. But overall, um, the flow looks relatively weak 
and temperatures though will remain hot inland deserts. How unusual is this heat wave? Well, on Friday, the weather pattern shows that unusually cold in the Gulf of Alaska and unusually warm right over the Great Basin and California. So a very strong upper level high pressure system for even this time of year. The actual air mass, um, it really shows up over the Great Basin and much of California. Again, this looks to be the most heat on Friday and Saturday. Let's look at particular temperatures. Friday, you can see some of our high desert areas getting near 105, near 115 lower deserts, up around 100 in the Inland Empire and 90s for inland valleys. Humidity will be low, so below 10% for our deserts. This is not monsoon. This is a dry heat wave. Nonetheless, um, this does increase fire potential activity. On Saturday, our deserts could see their hottest temperatures in the purple shading near 115. Still up around 100 in the Inland Empire hot spots and uh, well over 100 for the high deserts as shown here. To escape the relief, it looks like the coast, since this is not a Santa Ana wind event, the coast will feel the effects of a shallow marine layer and weak onshore flow. The wind does increase over the weekend, especially Sunday afternoon and evening, as shown here. We'll start seeing the high deserts and mountain passes having gusts of 30 miles per hour. Remember, this will be occurring with very hot temperatures. Let's take a look at some of the records. Um, are there records at stake? It looks like marked here in the red triangle, our desert areas could reach or exceed record levels. The records are shown here and the latest forecast highs. Next week, does it cool down? Well, no, it stays seasonably warm on the coast. It, it stays hot in the Inland Empire with 90s. Our deserts well over 100 for the lower deserts and even potentially over 110 returning in that area next Wednesday, the middle of next week. Are we gonna to have to deal with this for most of June? Well, the latest outlook that takes us from mid to late June shows a continued battle between unusual cool, wet weather in the Pacific Northwest along a jet stream that's active there and building expanding upper level high pressure from Texas and really all the Southern states into the Southwest. So uh, potential for heat rebuilding, especially in our desert. So this could end up being a very warm, much above average desert and mountain scenario, a lot like we saw in 2021. So the month of June could turn out similar to that. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, check out weather.gov San Diego for the latest information. I do want to share with you a couple nice tools at weather.gov. This is the hazard and data viewer. You can view live weather reports the past seven days and even go back into an archive and see any day. This is the hazard and weather data viewer available at weather.gov. We also have a new GIS viewer as shown here, and you can look at more detailed layer information, including the watches, warnings, and advisories. Finally, the graphical hazard weather outlook is posted on our webpage, and that is designed to highlight areas where different types of threat, anything from rip currents and fog to heat, fire, weather, and wind, or even heavy rain can be displayed on a map showing different levels from almost no threat to significant or even very high extreme threat. 